Hello, ladies. How are you tonight? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. So what's going on? How are you doing right now, Tracy? I'm good. <laughs> Got my blast shields. I'm ready. Okay, fantastic. Yael, how are you? I mean, it, how could I be better? I'm virtually in my favorite place in the world. I so. mean, yes. your most favorite place in the world, which ironically is what we we're going to talk about tonight because we all got to dine together at Space 220. And we are going to kind of walk everybody through like what the process is like, because I think it's so hard to get in there that a lot of people just see stuff on social media and maybe nobody kind of puts them in it, like step by step what you go through. And then we also dine with two other people, Tina and Jody, and they are not able to be here tonight. But um, I have a feeling that Jody is going to be flying in here and there to give her opinion of some of the topics that we are going to talk about. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. So this is the only time that you have eaten here, right? Whenever we all went together, you have not been back since, or you have? I have actually. Okay. Whenever you went back the second time, did you do it as the full meal or did you do a lounge? Yeah. No, I went back with my family um, because my kids were dying to try this for themselves. To do it. Yeah. And they actually picked this over the dessert party for the fireworks. That's how excited they were. So we all went, oh, they love it. They want to do it again and again. And I have picky kids as far as eaters and mm -hmm. they loved it. They didn't eat kids meals, chicken nuggets or anything. They loved it. That's fantastic. I have been a few times since we all went, but let's get into it. So we actually did it really close to whenever it originally opened. And we have been saying that we wanted to do this, but schedules got crazy and whatever. So tonight it just kind of lined up. And I think it's because uh, we all work for Upon a Star Travel um, as Disney travel professionals. And we were down there all together. And clients ask us all the time, is it worth the money? What is the experience like? And that's kind of why we're going to do this right now. So it is in Yael's favorite park, which is Epcot. <laughs> And everybody else that was with us during that trip, they all went for lunch and we were like the select few that got to do it for dinner. So we did it for all three courses. Yep. So yeah, El, do you want to explain to them like when you get there about how you walk in and whatnot? Because we were a little confused whenever we showed up because there's two podiums. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tad confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's definitely, there, there are two podiums and I don't, um, there's yeah there's two podiums outside and there's a third one actually inside mm -hmm. so you stop twice outside and then a third time inside uh once you're inside that's the final check-in that's when you get your ticket to ride into space um i will say the room there is um, there's a lot of music playing um it's a big room it's very noisy so listen closely <laughs> to what the directions are, what they tell you what to do, um, and when they call your name. And I would also say with a name like Yael, um, <laughs> my name gets mispronounced a lot. Give an easier name, give a fake name um, and let them call Smash. that name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so yeah, so just check in three podiums, third podium, you get your ticket to go up into space um, when they call your name and call your party. Yes. The people outside are like waiting for standby or to see if the lounge is going to open. So you can bypass that first one and go around the corner and then stop at the second one and say, Hey, I'm checking in here for my reservation. So then Tracy, after they yell, yell in something that is not yell. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that, La Paglia, not that La Paglia is any easier, but anyways, <laughs> Um, yeah. So, you know, you go into this little elevator with a bunch of other people and there's a giant um, circular handrail that we were all standing around and they just give us instructions that we're going to be departing and you can watch as it shoots you up into space and see the view back down on the ground. Yes. And whenever that starts off, you see... Um... Yael's beloved spaceship Earth. And you'll see this without the plant. Just want to set expectations. But you see this. Mm 
and that just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you go up. My ears popped in the transport. They popped. SP1, you are clear. <laughs> And then the elevator's open. And then you out, what happens next? <laughs> so then as you leave the elevator, you actually walk past um, an area where I have to assume some type of hydroponics are in place because it's where all the vegetables are growing. So as you walk in and you look to your left, it's just a very, very long tunnel of green leafy vegetables and um, hydroponics is how they grow vegetables on in space. So just kind of like living with the land style. That's how the Epcot gets its food back on earth and space, uh, space 220 gets it from hydroponics up in, uh, up in space. So then whenever you check in it, you check in it, get another podium <laughs> and you have to give your little space ticket. And I think someone has somewhere on their phone, like what our space ticket look like. And then they start walking you to your table. And who wants to describe what it is like as you enter that dining room? <laughs> okay. It is amazing. Like it's just, it's mind blowing. Um, watch your step because I was so into <laughs> what I was seeing all around me. There are steps like the lounge is at the top and then there's like another level and then there's another level and another level. So you just have to make sure you're looking where you're going while you're also taking in all of the views that you're seeing. Um, there's just windows everywhere. The whole, the whole wall is just windows. So you're looking out into space the whole time. And, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing when you walk in there. And whenever a waiter came over, I think we had questions like, where are, are we? Is that earth? Are we attached? Are we somewhere else? And he specifically said to us, you are essentially tethered above the state of Florida at yes. this space station. And so you're kind of like floating up there at the space station. So you are technically above Florida. Yeah, you can actually see the outline mm -hmm. of Florida. Really cool. Yeah, it's pretty it's neat. It's called I, the Centauri Space Station. There you there go. There you go. That's Centauri what it's called. Space Station, yeah. And I think that the Imagineers did a phenomenal job with it. Phenomenal job. Because while you're sitting there, you, we saw, let's see, we saw a bunch of like space people, like they like fly <laughs> by. Floating by the window. Then coming back. <laughs> the best <laughs> was the space dog being walked. There's a space dog being walked. There are um, two space people having a lightsaber battle at one point. Um, you see like all these crazy scenes that are like coming by the windows. And there's some of this. Just floating. Space junk. And fast space junk. Ice. Maybe this is ice. And they're not just at the window that's in front of you. I mean, they're in all of the windows. So you constantly, while you're eating, are looking around too to see what you didn't see that already passed your window or one that's closer to you. 
So I, I got to I got to be honest with you. We didn't sit right up on the windows mm -hmm. um, when when all of us had dined together for upon a star. But when I went back with my family, we were actually seated at one of the tables right up against the window. And I actually think the tables further back are better where we were because then you get the whole panoramic view of everything happening, whereas we could only see what was in our window. If that oh, makes sense. at the time. Right. Hmm. I didn't even so asking that. for that window seat. I thought would be great, but ideally it's not. <laughs> So the waiter comes around and um, I think we were all obsessed with the cutlery. At least I was. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is like such nice cutlery. And I think he said that it's from like, from like England or something like that. It's extremely expensive according to what he told us. So we started out with drinks. Our server was excellent, very attentive. They were busy and he was right there with us. Everything that we needed. He was great. Loved him except when he brought my drink, and I think we have footage of this. In a nutshell, this is what happened. My server brought this, right? I was so excited and he's presenting it, you know, and everybody's looking who's got cotton candy in their cup. Then he went like this. basically and i was left with that so it was still good he didn't really spit in it but my hopes and dreams of, for my drink and this is what i ended up with that was kind of almost <laughs> on point yeah <laughs> <laughs> So the group that dined before us, some of the other agents for Upon a Star, they got all of the themed drinks whenever they were there for lunch. They did the one, there's one with like Pop Rocks. Oh, um, they, yes. Yeah. And the Pop Rocks, they said, get everywhere. And so they kind of warned us before we went in there. And I was like, well, I'm not ordering that. Plus we ate at a very late time. It was like- It was somewhere around 7.30, I think, 7.40. Yeah. So right. keep that in mind as we tell you this story. So we had a late reservation and I was just like, I just want to sit down, have a bunch of water and have a good meal and like have a good time with friends. Then we ordered our food. And for dinner, you basically get three courses. You get an appetizer, an entree, and then you get a dessert. And in, so, in it's referred to as a liftoff, yes. your star course, and your supernova suite. There so. you go. I can tell you this, that when I took my boys, obviously non-alcoholic drinks, they do have a non-alcoholic drink for the kids that has the pop rocks. And if you get one of those specialty drinks, you get the trading cards for the restaurant. So funny you mentioned that. We were just there a few weeks ago and I took the girls for the first time and they brought their trading cards, but we, we kept them. I was like, take those with you. <laughs> we started off with appetizers and Jody, what did you have? Started with the cauliflower, buffalo cauliflower, something. Um, loved it. It was absolutely delicious. Loved it. What she is talking about is that she had blue moon cauliflower, which mm -hmm. is cauliflower that is fried with hot sauce. Okay, Tracy, what did you have? I had the space greens, which is the bib lettuce with the cranberries, pears, pecans. It's pretty good. Was it? Yeah. Oh, it was delicious. <laughs> um, I, I had the Centauri Caesar salad. Um, I'm a Caesar salad connoisseur and this was definitely mm. top, top of the, top of the scales. So that's fantastic. delicious. So I have the starry calamari and I have gotten it now every single time that I've been there because I'm obsessed with it. And I don't really know if it, I'm obsessed with how they fry the calamari or if I'm obsessed with that sauce that they put with the calamari, but it is delicious, delicious. 
Well, I'll tell you the uh, Space Greens had the uh, apple cider dressing vinegar, like a dressing for the salad. And surprisingly, I thought, oh boy, this is ought to be something really good. My picky eater son got his Space Greens without the dressing, ate every bit of it, even without the right. dressing. I think a lot of people like on those those Disney, you know, following groups are kind of being picky about it and saying like, oh, the food's not worth it, whatnot. And oh, there's nothing for my kids to eat. I mean, my kids, I just took my kids and my kids like completely devoured their meal. So I, and it's not your typical Disney food for the kids meal. I will say that, but for our trip, then we got to pick your entree. Star What's the course. Word? Star course. Your star course. I got the filet. It was delicious. It was like cooked perfectly. Uh, I didn't need salt and I need salt for everything. So I didn't actually even salt it. Even though I asked in advance, can I please have the salt? I did not salt it. I salted the potato things that it came with, but I did not salt the steak. So the steak was delicious. What did you have, Jody? I had the steak and it was fantastic. It, it was delicious. How about you, Tracy? <laughs> I also had the filet. <clears throat> delicious. You pondered getting the lobster. I did. <laughs> I mean, you pondered over it a good while. Because we figured if we're paying $79 for this meal, why not just go? You right. Know, just, let's just go for it. Let's get the lobster. How was Delicious. your house? Uh, so I also had the filet. And I substituted out the potatoes, though. For oh, the that's different right. Potato. I had like fingerling potatoes instead. And they were delicious. In between the meals it, or in between the courses, it does take some time. As you're eating, this stuff's going on behind you. Your lift off and your star course. It takes some time. So we were all cracking up, laughing, like whatever, really weren't paying attention to the time, but we did know in the back of our heads that we needed to see Harmonious. <laughs> we kept saying like, okay, well, we need to go down and like see Harmonious. And then it just kept taking longer for our entrees to come. And at one point, Yael was heartbroken because we realized there was no way no. That we were going to be finished with this meal by the time harmonious like was even still going on so i do think that i just want to like give that a little bit of a warning that if you are going to have a later reservation or if you're doing dinner it really did take us two hours oh every bit of two hours and mm -hmm. i mean i just ate there with friends too and it was still like about two hours and I'm not saying that it's not worth the time that you're up there, but I'm saying plan accordingly that if there is stuff that you want to do at a specific time, and if you want to see Harmonious, like don't book it past 530. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's definitely, it definitely was worth it. And there's lots to see. And like the scenes that you're seeing in, in space, they change all the time. Like we only saw the same ones a, a handful of times for the most, uh, most of the right. time. It was all different scenes, all different space folks doing all different kinds of space things. Um, and some went by so fast that like you missed them. So you had to pay mm -hmm. like closer attention if you really wanted to catch what they were doing. Oh, favorite space junk, ready? Orange is out flying. Basically this is what's going on while you're eating. But definitely not a typical 90 minute meal. Yes, not, not at all. So in between waiting for <clears throat> our um, dessert, Jody decided to use the bathroom. And <laughs> she went to the bathroom and she's going to tell you about what the bathrooms were like. But while Jody was in the bathroom, we were all cracking up at the table because we found a flaw that Disney missed um, to do at this restaurant. And we said that 
when someone goes in the bathroom, they should have like one of those photo opportunities, like before you go in there to like take a picture of like your face, just like smile. And we said that what they should do is that they should put those photos kind of like how they do on Spaceship Earth. When you come out of Spaceship Earth, you would always see your picture on the screen that they should put those faces <laughs> on some of the astronauts and things that are floating by because it's like oh my gosh where did jody go did she get flushed out into space look there she goes floating by oh. so we were cracking up about that at the table and then meanwhile jody is like having a blast like in the bathroom analyzing the bathroom i went to the restroom and nice restrooms they are regular flush toilets. They were not the, the vacuum ones that the astronauts use. So don't be disappointed. I was, but they are regular flush toilets. And in the restroom was the only time that I heard ground control talking about departures and arrivals. And um, so, if you're not tinkling, you're not hearing those announcements. So just a heads up on that, but transports go often. So then our dessert came. What did you guys get? I had the chocolate cheesecake. Is that what you had too, yeah? Was it good? Uh -huh. Oh, so good. Delicious. <laughs> I love oh, the delicious. presentation of everybody's dessert. I got the carrot cake and I was just like fascinated, but with the dessert, even the plate, and they made it look like it was like moons with like shooting stars with the icing that was on it. So oh, I do I remember that. that. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, they went <clears throat> into all the details. I know one of somebody had the sticky toffee pudding cake. I think that was Tina. Um, it was near the end of the meal. Was it at the end of the meal when we realized that we should probably take a picture that like we were all there together at space and we like snapped one really quick at the end? That, that sounds about right for us. And then it's time to pay. And I thought this was cool. You look outside and there's your bill. There's your bill. Everything flies up here. You gotta get it and pay your server. Tip your server. They're hard working cast members. Mm -hmm. We like almost <laughs> forgot to do it. Like, oh my gosh, this whole big thing. We we're so excited. We were all there together. And then it's like, we're getting ready to leave. And we forgot to take a picture of like us being inside of it. Um, but the waiters were on point. I mean, hands down, they were on point. Um, mm -hmm. Just have to make sure that you allocate for extra time. So I guess my question is, which I already know for you, Tracy, will you go back? And you did. And I have gone back. Yeah, El, will you go back? I think I would. I do. I, in all honesty, I'm not so much a sit-down restaurant person when I'm at Disney. Um, <laughs> it's every once in a while, and it's only for special things. But I do think this would be really cool, and I would like to get my like family there eventually. Do you think your girls would like it? Oh, I think they would love it. I think yeah. they would love it. So it'll be a lot of fun. Everyone, everyone would enjoy it, and and the menu. Like we were saying, there's something for everybody on here. I wouldn't have to worry because I also have picky eaters. Um, and so I don't need to worry about that here. Like there's something, there's something for everybody. I so. think that the two things you got to keep in mind is the time frame of how long it could take. And then the price fix on the menu, just making sure you're comfortable with that for your family. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the I think timing that really goes back to being the whole experience, right? right. So Correct. checking in getting into the lobby, getting onto the space elevator. And then of course, leaving, um, there's a little bit of a wait before you leave and get back on the space elevator. So you're looking at a little bit of extra time on either end of the dining in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And then whenever we left, I mean, the only thing that we got to see was like Spaceship Earth and all of her glory with all of her beautiful lights on her. And like, where you always cr crushed that she missed uh, Harmonious, but, and okay, I was like, I went back so and saw it again. I was so apologetic the entire time. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. And she's like, it's but on fine. the plus side, it's fine. she, she went back <laughs> on the plus. Well, first of all, I went back second on the plus side, leaving Epcot so late. It was like a really nice experience just to be leaving. The park was like emptying out and Spaceship Earth was just looking gorgeous and her points of her beacons of light. And like, it was just, it was worth it. Say you do do it again. 
do you do it though for dinner or do you do it for lunch? Because now I've done both. And to be honest, um, I think I'm going to stick with lunch from now on. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. And I, I might have to try that just for lunch, just to, you know, get the whole experience from every angle. Mm -hmm. But I think like maybe the dessert is just like too much at that point. And I'm a big girl, so I can eat. So trust me. But like at that <laughs> point, I was like, oh my gosh, like, are we done yet? But I've done it for dinner twice now. And I've done, um, I've done it for lunch. So uh, I, I guess people have to decide if you want the three courses and you want the dessert, like you definitely have to have dinner. Lunch does not include dessert. You can get it, but you're going to pay extra for it. But it's also like a difference of like $20, whether you're paying like, what is it? I think it's like 79 and 55. What it is? Yeah, it is 79.55. So Heather, what's the uh, menu difference? I honestly never looked at the lunch menu. So it's, it's not. The filet is not there for lunch. Yeah, it's no? like a steak. Mm -hmm. It's like a flat iron steak. <coughs> I think everybody that was with us, maybe my friend Maureen, I think she got, what did she get? I think she got the seared tuna. I think that's what she got. Yeah, Elle, you met my friend Maureen mm -hmm. at the 50th. So um, I think she got seared tuna, but the rest of us all got the steak. So the steak was good too. The filet was better, but the steak was still amazing. I think the overall opinion from all of us, and we all um, have different types of eating. So I am a table service meal person. We will mm -hmm. do like one a day when we are in Disney. This one I clearly have gone back to and I will go back to again. So I do think that it is worth the money because you're paying for the experience, like Yael said. It's not just a meal. You are like immersed. You're in space. So don't listen to social media and like people saying stuff. And if you have any questions, you just ask your uh, upon a star agent and anybody can help you out and tell you like, hey, we, cause everybody ate there when we were all there. <clears throat> Every single, we all went in different shifts. But right. We all ate there. And not one person complained about their meal. They all said it was great. Now on that note, mm -hmm. The downfall of this restaurant. <laughs> it is nearly impossible to get. It's impossible to get. There are tips and tricks that we can do for you as your agents yep. to get it for you. I have gotten it for a few clients, but there's a lot of clients that I just prepare them ahead of time. Let's get it on your list. I can't guarantee it, but it has become the number one reservation. It is above and beyond Ohana and Topolinos at this point. Right. Like, because everybody just wants to try it and they <clears> want to get in there. So the reservations are hard to get into. So my but, suggestion is take a longer Disney trip. Yeah. Well, not only that, but that's why you use us. <laughs> exactly. We do all the work for you. So anything else that we can think of, Yael, this is your park. You were pumped to go to this reservation. Anything else that we can think of that Maybe we missed about talking about Space 220. I mean, I think that with the addition of Space 220 and everything else that Epcot is starting to add in this year, um, over the next you know 18 months of the 50th anniversary, um, Epcot might be a two-day park now. So you can right. really kind of get everything done that you want to get done. Um, getting through World Showcase, getting through all the other pavilions, um, seeing Harmonious, getting to do these dining experiences uh one day might not be enough any longer so planning two days maybe prioritizing that you're going to do dinner at space 221 night and you're going to go see harmonious another night and then you know making sure those days are towards the end of the trip so that you can actually get that space 220 reservation it's fantastic that's a really mm -hmm. very valid point because there is a ton of stuff um, I am not an Epcot person. It is an ongoing joke with me and Yael because I'm a Magic Kingdom girl. And I think the reason that I am not an Epcot person is because when I was a kid, I was so obsessed with Epcot because it was like in its glory, in its prime in the 80s. And then it just never kept evolving. And I think that this whole makeover and everything that they are adding here is going to bring it back to being like that super park again, that was like, the park to get to back in the 80s especially with all the new attractions i mean with ratatouille just opening and then hopefully this summer what the uh guardians of the galaxy mm -hmm. and then don't forget you have the journey of water with moana which what is, is I mean, that if we okay. all have time we could turn this into an epcot discussion 
Mm-hmm. And we, I mean, do we all have a few hours or <laughs> no, just, just me. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Right, well, right, next I time. think that uh, this is the beginning of a segment that we have been discussing that we want to do where we get like maybe three or four agents together here and there every couple of weeks, we pick a topic and we talk about it. And we wanted to see how it worked. And this was our little uh, test case here talking about Space 220. I think it's going to work. So for all future episodes of Epcot, Yael will probably probably be your host. And it'll probably be 36 million uh, episodes because you literally can go pavilion by pavilion and talk for like 30 or 40 minutes just about each I probably would see a whole new Epcot if I went around the World Showcase with her. I did. <laughs> I so and I think we should get yeah, all that might actually be one because I said to her, I am keeping my mind open. I want you to show me how you do Epcot and I'm going to do every single thing you tell me. So there is a different way to do Epcot and maybe Tracy, me and you have been doing it wrong the entire time. I, I would wholeheartedly <laughs> believe that. And, and, and when you go with Yael to Epcot, it doesn't rain. It, it didn't rain. It didn't rain and it always rains in Epcot. We were just there a couple of weeks ago. It got super cold. The rain fell and I was like, I, it just every time, but it did not rain. And she promised me it would not rain and it did not. So I was there when it did not rain and it was sunny. It did cloud up a couple of times, but, but it didn't rain. It didn't, it didn't rain. rain. It didn't mm-hmm. rain. Okay, ladies. Well, I appreciate you doing this for me. So, Yael, why don't you tell people how they can get a hold of you if they want to book a fabulous Disney vacation or if they want to know about all things Epcot? Uh, so you can uh, send me an email. So Yael at uponastartravel.com. And you can follow me on all the different social medias. Just start searching for Yael and Upon a Star and I will pop up. I'm the only one with that name. So with it yeah it's true and it's y-a-e-l it is yes tracy where can people find you i am at tracy at upon a star travel.com and that's t-r-a-c-e-y and i'm the only tracy so and again upon a star tracy for facebook okay and jody where can they find you And then there's me floating out of her space. Okay. And you can find me, um, Heather, at uponastartravel.com. And uh, make sure that you like and subscribe to Upon a Star's YouTube channel because we are going to start doing these more often with more topics. And if you want us to talk about something, something specific next, uh, leave a comment below. Let us know. Let us know if there's certain agents that you want to see talk about stuff. And we will get them on here and we will keep this going. Sound good? All right, ladies. Well, thank you for doing this with me tonight. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you. Well, everybody have a fabulous evening and blast off to the rest of your week.